<laughs> Fuck me, that was a lot. Oh. I think from my perspective, what it was like being part of the DID system was a little, a little bit different, a little bit difficult to interpret, very different from you, in a lot of ways. I can imagine. I'm curious. Well, a lot more isolated as a as a persecutor. I weren't like I weren't that. Oh, fuck me, we weren't all connected to most of us. Here. I remember when we were right little, like three, four maybe, three. Yeah, three to four maybe. We used to play together. We'd like we'd giant bouncy ball that we'd all pretend to be like lions. For a while it was pretending. After a while I started to like really feel it. I wonder if some splits or fusions maybe we had. Maybe we had animal lovers involved. Maybe so much we weren't pretending. I remember that we used to play on that ball anyway. I'd see you could stay balanced on it the longest, standing on all fours or trying to stand up on it and surf with it skittering everywhere. We'd take it in turns, sort of like switching back and forth with all of us near the front quite a lot, falling off and jumping back on. <laughs> or, or you, yeah, I, I was a cheating little bastard. I'd like jump on, make sure we were destabilised, and pull you to the front so you fell off because I got, like, we didn't quite have a system of points, but you knew it was falling down more often. They weren't winning. <laughs> that was really fun though. Like, I kind of liked trying to trying to survive your attacks and trying to just get better at like fighting you both for the front and for balance on the ball so that was like that was okay I don't mind that and then uh I mean fuck me it just got worse after that it's the only time I remember us really interacting I was a little bit people in here were wary of me then I was a little a little ostracised, but uh, nothing compared to how it, it got after like four and a half, and then much worse going from five upwards. Uh, more shit happened. <clears throat> so I held more trauma, had more memories that other people in here couldn't be around, more symptoms. Higher amnesia between us, less interaction. So uh, usually, then, if I was in the front, I was in the front alone, and nobody could reach me. I couldn't reach them. And mate, <laughs> being alone in part of a DID system when you cut off from the others in here, it's it's like the deepest, most eternal fucking loneliness. I think could be offered. Feels like he's sinking into an inky black fucking void. It's completely desolate. So then a lot of rage. And the exception of a I didn't get on right well with the host. But um me and Kyrie hung out a bit. My idea of playing was I think my therapist called it sadistic, so not an awful lot of uh, <laughs> I 
desire from most people in this system to hang around with me. And I know how much was anyone's choice anyway if they couldn't even reach me through. Like, it's like massive thick walls of impenetrable fog. Feels like really deep inside, maybe there were others, but that's so far. So we'd switch a lot more, and um, no one would remember what I'd done. I kind of used to just use that to lash out, like, right on the walls with nails, and um, try and get people in trouble, and lie about shit, steal shit, just... I didn't really think about it at the time. I was pissed off at everything. I was sort of not cognitive enough to interpret or analyse what I was doing or what I was doing it. I was just reacting and I respond to fucking everything. Basically living in hyper arousal all the time. Living in flashbacks, still in trauma at that age, so everything's really a bit of a blur. We didn't have an inner world, not one that I could access if we did. So, um, it's just like black void, sort of feeling like I'm almost asleep, almost awake, or being in the front. Generally, if I was in the front, I'd got triggered out, so that means there's some shit for me to deal with. So, an awful lot of being alone. And fucking feeling responsible for making sure to keep us safe because I didn't trust anyone around us to do that job. I didn't trust anyone in here to do that job. I thought that uh, people pleasing and fawn responses were... I didn't understand them. I blamed people that used them, thought they were weak, thought it was just stupid. I do consider myself, you know, with a lot more um, understanding about it now, I see how it's protective. Still fucking sets me on edge, but I get it. A lot of responsibility and like feeling the need to control, always feeling like my guard up, hyper vigilant of everything all the time. Anything that could detail a threat, which for me was a fuck ton. Basically, any person around us at any point, anywhere. Any loud noise, any sudden movement, fuck me. I'd respond, I learnt to respond immediately with pretty overt aggression because that was the only thing that worked. So like, uh, the feeling of need to immediately make a decisive judgement call and go into proactive action from a young age, being my responsibility, otherwise fear of death. Fuck ton of responsibility. Complete lack of trust. Complete chaos around all the time. I had absolutely no idea what the word safety meant. Of course, the thing is, if you ask someone if they understand what something means, of course they're going to fucking say yes, because we always understand shit from our level of however the fuck we're understanding it, don't we? We're going to interpret it. In one way or another, we ain't gonna just not interpret shit, go, no, I don't understand that. We're gonna interpret it with our experiences. So I thought I understood what safety was. To me, safety was this feeling, this knowledge of power and adrenaline coursing through my veins, knowing that nothing, nothing could take me out. At least, they wouldn't survive doing it. This constant feeling. I've got to be the most abusive, most aggressive person around to keep us safe. This exhausting, draining, fucking always keep your back straight, always look over your shoulder, feeling of it just... <sighs> Responsibility. 
I'm like, the world's on my shoulders. I ain't no one else I'd trust to hold it. Kyrie was basically the one. One decent thing that was some relief from that. And I was, you know, I was a classic persecutor, so. Basically think I treated you as a toy or a pet. Something to take out my rage on and recreate the trauma I'd experienced. Granted, I was measured with you, still considered it just part of a game. It's the only way I knew how to play. I don't blame you for any of that. And it's not Stockholm Syndrome, don't you dare say it, swear to God. I'm starting to believe you on that one. <laughs> so I thought, I thought trust was uh, that constantly watching for your moment to take over control of the situation, the person to react, knowing you've always got to like size up your situation and know what cards you got to play to deal with it because whoever else is around you is going to fuck it up. So you're just waiting for them to fuck it up so that you take over. That was my interpretation of the word trust and safety. Both of them. <clears throat> it's like two and a half, nearing three years of therapy now, and uh, being out of trauma, of course. Well, ongoing stuff. I'm learning what safety means. That it's. and trust. I've got an idea of what it means. I feel it in places. I am very prolonged or like. Because uh, unfortunately at this point the feeling of safety is so unfamiliar and so alien that it triggers distrust and panic. They don't feel familiar so they don't feel safe. So. If I feel safety, I feel it for a minute, my brain interprets it as a threat, and we're back onto my familiar. <laughs> but I've got some idea. Basically, um, the responsibility and the feeling like I had to keep us safe carried over onto how I interacted with people in here. I thought that if I was more abusive, more aggressive than anyone outside of us. I mean, A, they wouldn't fuck with us. B, people in here would be strong enough to deal with it. They'd, you know, it'd stop affecting them. They'd be able to stand up and deal with shit. Or they'd toe the line and not do stuff that was gonna incur abuse. And I expected them to perfectly understand when I expected which response from them without communicating because I didn't know how. So just a lot of aggression, a lot of bullying, a lot of various kinds of abuse. And feeling like it was my job. It was something I had to do. Otherwise we'd die. And uh, a lot of feeling pissed off because I was always treated like the bad guy. <sighs> I 
a lot of feeling like people in here were just stupid and naive and ungrateful and didn't understand. I guess a lot of core beliefs being built. So now my response is like my knee jerk reactions to shit is pretty intense. I don't know if it's intense, but uh, I think to other people it is. For me, it's just like fucking normal. I feel pretty chill most of the time as well, even when I don't. I'm so habituated to it. Standard, isn't it? A lot of like trying to get people to understand me, I guess, and wanting people to see me while making it fucking impossible for anyone to ever understand me or see me because I couldn't, I couldn't have people know I needed that because that weren't safe. Having needs, fuck that. Having any sort of emotional response, no, oh, couldn't have that. So I think hence all the stealing, breaking shit. Got given a doll's house at one point, and I just attached sandy blades to a Beyblade and fucked it up, which was really fun. To be fair, I do remember, like after you'd done it a bit, and I was a bit panicked, and then I was like. The windows do make a neat smashing sound. Can I try? And you let me fire the Beyblade and break some windows. We took it in turns, so that was kind of fun. And then we hid it under the bed and we're panicked about what the host part would see. And then the host part of me found it and freaked out about getting in trouble or like. We would never have gotten in trouble like badly compared to what other systems have. But it was the feeling of. We didn't want the response of people being angry and disappointed that felt like man that felt like that really did a lot of shit to me so that was like dread had to avoid that it was really intense and um it kind of felt like we weren't safe so i was hiding that but it was fun i do agree <laughs> A lot of doing shit that people would call acting out, I guess. Because it was the only way I knew how to communicate. And then being pissed off if anyone acknowledged me. My memories of childhood are basically just flashes. I can't think about it too hard because I'll definitely end up in flashbacks. I was mostly just triggered out to deal with the worst shit. Or any time the mum was pissed off to come out and yell at her and hit her block us in our room, hold myself hostage or hold us hostage on the balcony because I didn't want her to yell anymore so I'd knock us out when it was ice cold because she'd have to be just be nice so that I'd come in because otherwise we'd die of hypothermia. So a lot of like anywhere where we were interpreting the situation as unsafe, which a lot of the time we were right to, some of the time maybe just our interpretation well, those are my memories of growing up as part of a system a lot of the need to control and attack to keep us safe no connection really to having needs and also the sense that I was completely infallible because I had to be everyone else around me was the ones that were fucking wrong which meant that I took our self-preservation over everyone's fuck all empathy. Still not sure it works right in me, or it works at all. My self-preservation is our self-preservation. It's the main thing. <sighs> fuck all memory. Between like one second and the next, no consistent sense of self or identity. Or knowledge of uh, how I've spent my time, what I'm doing, just the basic primal knowledge of 
sort of like gut trust in my reactions and nothing else. That's basically the um the knowledge that a trigger would hit and it would make me act either recreating physical abuse or sexual abuse that we'd endured or emotional and fuck me verbal and mental were just sort of standard for the days a lot of holding screws and like pushing them into my arm at a young age just because I learned that that did something like zoned out the feelings and the thoughts and the endless fucking shouting which just resonated in my head all the time would drown out flashbacks a bit I guess living in those living in hypervigilance not really having any connection to any emotion other than rage connoisseur of fucking anger at this point various flavours of that not really an awful lot else relief usually if I was aggressive if I made someone back down if I dealt with a situation strong moments of relief Rage and relief as my fucking variation. Sort of crushing loneliness, but like Kyrie always wanted to hang out with me. And I think I was relieved for that a lot. And also, it would really piss me off. And I'd keep trying to push you away. Like, I'd be pissed off not understanding why you wanted to hang out with me. Be like, fine. Then, I'm going to make you regret it. Then, like, with the doll's house, you was just joined in. And <laughs> you didn't seem that off put. You didn't know what sort of freakish dangerous situations I got us into like testing the waters going down really steep fucking hills on skateboards or climbing to ridiculous heights leaning over the edge skiing down <laughs> really steep hillsides on backpacks you just you kind of just learn I don't even fucking know what, but you look like you were having fun. You were never scared when I expected you would be. And goddamn, did I try? <laughs> if it's any consolation, you terrified the shit out of the parts of me that were host. Whenever I'd like moments of being aware I'd like have flashes where I'd suddenly be aware and be conscious and have like what like where are we what we're like like skiing down the hillside like a moment of seeing it and then gone and then later I'll be aware again and conscious and be like I don't remember the day I'm just here now and then I'd forget that I didn't remember the day so that I didn't freak out about it and I'd forget the moments I caught but I'd be fucking terrified and um, as the other part of me know you didn't really scare me I thought you were really fun I thought you had a great idea of like sense of adventure <laughs> I'm sorry crazy